happy Sabbath wherever you are and wherever you are viewing us from. My name is Pastor Charles Mtuge. We want to welcome you today again to our sermon. Uh, we want to thank you, those who have been following us through YouTube and through Facebook. Please, we encourage you to continue following the message because the Lord will continue blessing us together. But before we do that, I want to welcome you to a session of prayer so that we can listen to what the Lord is saying to us today. May we pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to come before you this morning. We want to thank you for this wonderful Sabbath. Lord, we pray that as we are going to listen to your word, and wherever members are listening in this country and even outside this country, may you lead us through your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome you once again to our sermon. Our sermon is entitled Faith Moved by Fear. Brothers and sisters, I want to say that since the time when the corona epidemic was announced in our country, there is fear all over. But today, I want you to join me as we take a step to the word of God so that we can know what the Lord is saying to us at a moment like this. Our topic, Faith Moved by Fear, and our key text is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse number 7. I read from the NIV version, the Bible says, by faith, no one being warned of God, of things not yet seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared and hark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is by faith. Therefore, my dear viewer, I want to welcome you as we go through this particular text. And I want to invite you as we look at the four major steps in this particular text. Step number one will be faith as a principle. Number two will be moved with fear. And then number three, we will dwell on obedience as the fruit of faith and fear. And then number four, we will dwell on the result of faith and fear. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that faith as a principle, the Bible itself defines faith as a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And therefore, the Bible in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 6 also confirms that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But when you go to the book of 1 John chapter 5 verse number 4, it says that all of us need faith, faith that overcomes the world. Brothers and sisters, there's a particular moment when all of us are worried, when all of us are uncertain of what is going to happen again, I want to welcome you as we take the journey of faith that overcomes the world. And therefore, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 7, I want to start, as I have said, with faith as a principle, and we will be standing Noah as a character. Number one, I want you to note that Noah believed in God. Noah and faith in God. Why? Because the Bible describes him as a just man. The other translations describe Noah as a righteous man. When you go back to the story of Noah, in the book of Genesis chapter 7, verse number 1, it says, the Lord commanded Noah to enter the ark, and the Lord said, Because you only I have found righteous. And therefore, I want to say, for you to be righteous or just in the sight of God, it's never possible apart from faith. Why? 
Because if you look at the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse number 17, as you compare with Galatians chapter 3, verse number 11, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. And therefore for Noah to be declared a righteous man, for Noah to be declared as a just man, it must be, it is because of faith, because the righteous shall live by faith. Brothers and sisters, wherever you are watching us from, I want to tell you that faith must be consistent, but not occasional. Why? We need faith everywhere and anywhere. We need faith when we are buying. We need faith when we are selling. We need faith even when at the marketplace, just the same way we need faith when we are in a prayer meeting. Because the Bible puts it clear that without faith, you cannot praise God. And therefore, everywhere, because we would like to praise God, we need this particular faith. I want to tell you that even during this time of isolation and solitude, we need faith, lest like David, who was in isolation at a certain moment, when all other warriors were at war, we fall into temptation and commit a folly. And therefore, when we go back to the story of Noah, I want to tell you the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 6 says, it is by faith that Noah did everything before he entered the ark. Because our key text, our key text says that by faith Noah, when he was commanded by God, everything that Noah did, he did by faith before he entered the ark. And therefore we need faith while working, we need faith while buying, as I have said. We need faith in our daily activities, just as we need it even when we have our normal church routine. We need this kind of faith because, as I have said, without faith, it is not possible to please God. And therefore, Noah and faith, I want you to mark this, in the warning and the threat of God, just as he had faith in the promises of God to save him and his family. I want to repeat that the faith that Noah had, it is not faith only in the promises of God. It is not the faith only in God's salvation. But Noah believed the warning. Noah believed the threat. No one believed in the punishment that was about to overtake the world. And therefore, dear viewer, I wanted to tell you, you cannot have faith in God's promises if you don't have faith in God's threats, if you don't have faith in God's warning, and if you don't have faith in God's judgment also. Why? Because faith is a complete trust towards God. If you truly believe in God, you believe in all what he says. You believe God can bless, you believe God can heal, you believe that God can also be able to solve your problems, but at the same time, you need to believe the warnings that God also has given. Because he who does not believe that God will punish sin, for example, cannot believe that God can pardon sin. If you don't believe that God will cast the sinners into hell, you cannot believe that God will take believers to heaven. If you cannot believe in the final destruction of this world, you cannot believe in eternal life. If you do not believe that the world will be destroyed, you cannot believe in the promises of God that there is a new earth where righteousness dwells. And therefore, you to be confident 
enough in the promises of God. For you to believe that God can solve your problem, even at this particular moment, you need also to believe the other side that God also can punish. You need to believe that God also will bring judgment. You need to believe that there is the wrath of God that is also prophesied in the Bible. He who does not believe there is death cannot be sure of the resurrection. He who can doubt God's word in one particular thing may shall not be confident in the other. And I wanted to tell you when we take Noah as a character, Noah believed the promises of God, and but also Noah listened to the warnings and the threats that God will destroy all the living things with the front. The problem we are having at our moment in this world today is that every believer would only like to believe that there is salvation when the front comes, but the believer does not want to believe that the front is coming to destroy sinful human beings. Everybody would like to hear the Lord will bless you. Everybody would like to hear the Lord will be with you. Everybody at this particular moment of Corona would like to hear the Lord will heal you. But nobody would like to hear God say that when you go against my will, all these diseases will come before you. And therefore for you to be confident that God can heal this world, we need also to be confident that God has given a warning to this world. Therefore, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, Noah's faith believed both in the warning and also in the promises of God. He did not believe in the threat. If Noah did not believe in the threat, dear viewer, I wanted to tell you he would not have prepared an ark. The reason why Noah prepared an ark, it is because he believed in the warning that God had given. It is because he believed that the judgment that God had pronounced will really overtake this world. And that is why Noah couldn't be able to trust in the promises also of building an ark. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, believe in God's warnings so that you can be confident of God's promises. The key text in the book of Hebrews 11, verse number 7, I remind you again, the Bible says, By faith, no one being warned by God of things not yet seen, as yet prepared an ark. Noah, being what, believed in the warning. And then he prepared an ark because he also believed in the promises of God on how salvation is to come when the warning comes true. Now, I want to tell you, Noah believed even what seemed to be highly impossible. Why? The Bible tells me that Noah built an ark on a dry land. Why? Because with God, all things are possible. I know you are wondering how there, you are wondering how all what is happening will come to an end. But I want to encourage you this Sabbath morning that, dear viewer, wherever you are, that take God at his word, because with God all things are possible. Noah did not believe in God because there was a scientific proof. Noah did not believe in God because there was a research. Noah knew that an ark is supposed to be on the sea. But Noah believed the impossibility and built a hack on dry ground. Therefore, when we talk of faith, brothers and sisters, I wanted to tell you by when we talk of faith in God, there is no room for probability. 
when God has spoken. The faith that overcomes the world is the faith that believes everything is possible with God. I want to tell you during the time of Noah there was no scientific proof. The only proof that in our hand it was thus says the Lord. Therefore, I wanted to tell you another unique thing with the faith that in our hand. Noah believed alone and Noah preached alone. No one followed him except Noah and his family. And therefore, I wanted to tell you, you can trust God even in isolation. You can trust God even without a church fellowship. You can trust God even when you are quarantined. You can trust God even when you are alone in your room. Noah believed in God alone. Everybody else never accompanied Noah except the family members. But Noah became persistent in his faith despite the matter that he was alone. Remember, dear viewer, the way to heaven is never wind. The Bible says it is a narrow way. I wanted to tell you another unique thing with the soul of Noah is that Noah believed for 120 solitary years. Noah believed in possibility. Noah believed alone. And Noah believed also for a period of 120 years. He was consistent. It doesn't matter when the corona will come to an end. It doesn't matter how long it will take. You can still in believe in God for as long as it takes. For now, we are in the period of 100 days of prayer. But I wanted to tell you, dear viewer, you can be able to pray for 100 days and more. You can be able to do that. Brothers and sisters, I want you to note another unique thing with, Noah, with the faith that Noah had. Noah believed even in separation from the world. Because the Bible tells me Noah entered the ark, he and his family, and he was separated from the rest of the world. Even when you are separated from the rest of the world, you can still believe in God. Bible also makes it even more worse and it says, when Noah entered the ark, God shut him in. I wanted to tell you this is unique because according to me when I look at the story of Noah, is that God put the curfew for that lasted for seven days before the flood came. But the Bible says, the Lord shut him in. He pronounced a curfew uh, that Noah obeyed. No going out, no interacting. You stay indoors with your family. And Noah believed in it. And the Bible says the Lord shut him in. And also the curfew was again extended after the flood started for an extra 40 days and 40 nights. Noah was under curfew inside the ark. Therefore, dear viewer, I wanted to tell you, it doesn't matter what is happening now. I wanted to join the government to say, therefore, stay at home. I want to repeat again, wherever you're watching me from, stay at home. Noah stand in the ark for as long as the Lord, the curfew that God had pronounced last tent. But I wanted to tell you, Noah was comfortable. The, the young men who were with Noah never complained. The young women who were with Noah never complained because they believed in God's promises that they will be true. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that even when there is no curfew, you need to know that separation from the world is a spiritual demand. 
The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 17, tells me that wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Even when there is no curfew, a Christian and believer is supposed to assume that I am already separated from the world. I want to tell you to a Christian, whether he does or how it does, we assume the world is dead. Because in the book of Galatians 6 verse 14, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and high into the world. A believer will always believe that even when there is no curfew, even when there is no corona, even when there is no quarantine, the world out there is crucified before you just as Noah entered the ark, was separated from the world, and the Lord shut him in. Brothers and sisters, I want to move quickly to the next point and say, the, what was the motivating factor? The Bible says Noah was moved by fear. Faith was the living principle, but fear was the moving power that prevailed Noah to believe in God. The text says, by faith, Noah being one of God, of the things not yet seen, he moved with fear. I know the Bible wants us against the fear because no matter what happens, never forget the power of God can alter your circumstances and calm your fears. Even during this time of Corona, I want you to get this from the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 that it says, Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not in dismay, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. But Noah, dear viewer, was moved by a different kind of fear. That is the fear of the Lord. The fear that led him to trust and put his trust in God. When you look at the book of Psalm 56, verse number 3, the Bible tells me, but when I am afraid, I will put my trust in God. Are you afraid out there? Do not put your trust anywhere else. Just like Noah, put your trust in God. This is the fear that made Noah obey God's command and his promises. The book of Proverbs, dear viewer, is very rich in this kind of fear. In the book of Proverbs 9 verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And when you go to the same book of Proverbs 10 verse 27, it says, The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The same book, chapter 3, verse number 7, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. I want you to appreciate the book of Proverbs 14, verse 16, also reminds us about this fear. The wise fear the Lord and shun evil, but a fool is altered and yet feels secure. So this is the kind of fear that you can also get in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse number 7, it says, He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, because the hour of his judgment is come. And therefore, dear viewer, I want to tell you, this is the kind of fear that motivated Noah to have faith in God. I want to tell you, when you are afraid of what is happening in the world, and you believe God allowed it to happen. That kind of fear of the Lord can motivate you to have confidence in God's promises. Then point number three, I wanted to tell you the faith and the fear gave result. Faith and fear led Noah to do as the Lord commanded him. 
When fear of the Lord is engrafted upon the faith, it brings forth good fruit, and that is obedience. Noah's obedience to God was strict and exact. I want you to follow me in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse number 22. It says, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. When you compare with Genesis chapter 7, verse number 5, it says, And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Therefore faith and the fear of the Lord gave the fruit of Noah obeying what the Lord commanded. Noah obeyed the Lord carefully. Why? God said to him, Make an ark, and Noah prepared an ark. And he entered the ark carefully, just as the Lord had said. You, can go, you cannot go to heaven, dear viewer, if you neglect the formula that the Lord has given for salvation. The book of Hebrews confirms this. By, uh, the book of Hebrews confirms this. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse number 3, you can follow with me. It says, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and confirmed to us by them that earned him. Therefore Noah obeyed God at all costs. The cost of preparing of an ark, I want to say it was not simple. The moment you believe in God, have faith in God, be mobbed by the fear of God, you can be able to be a persistent Christian it, despite the cost that it may incur. So, dear viewer, wherever you are, I want to ask a question. So what does God require of you and me? The book of Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13 reminds us about the same thing. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment. That is the whole duty of man. I have explained the faith. I have explained the fear. I have explained the obedience. And therefore, I want to take you to the last bit as we conclude number four, the result of faith, fear, and obedience. As a result of that, Noah was saved and his house. I wanted to tell you it doesn't matter where you are, wherever you are viewing us from, from your house or wherever you are, you can be saved, you and your house. The book of Acts 16 verse 31 reminds me of Paul saying, and he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, you and your house. That is the formula that God has given for salvation. Another result was that Noah condemned the world through his preaching for a period of 120 years. Brothers and sisters, even as I preach here, I am not doing it so that you can join my church. I am not doing it so that you can come and follow me as Pastor Mutugi. But I am getting the confidence in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse number 14, that it tells me this gospel will be preached. In the, uh, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. That was mo the motivation that made Noah continue even when no one was listening to him. Last time, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you the text that we are reading in the book of Hebrews 11 verse 7 also confirms that as a result of faith, fear, and obedience, Noah became heir of the righteousness that is by faith. Noah did not have anything that he could show before God, but the Bible says he found favor before the highest of God. And that is what we refer to as grace. It is an unmerited favor. Just as the Bible confirms, Noah found favor in the highest of God. I want to remind you of the key text again. By faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, 
prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Therefore, dear viewer, I wanted to tell you in conclusion, it doesn't matter what is happening in your life right now. You couldn't be having more problems even than the coronavirus. But I wanted to remind you, have faith in God. Number two, believe in God's warning and in judgment just as you believe in his promises. And then I want to remind you, fear the Lord and shun evil. Some of us are fearing corona more than we fear the Lord. The Bible today reminds us that Noah moved with fear, and that is the fear of the Lord. Wherever you are, fear the Lord and shun from evil. And then lastly, brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit will enable you to bear the fruit of obedience as a result of faith and the fear of the Lord. So that whatever the Lord says and he commands you to do, just like Noah, it will be sent of you and in you, Noah, deemed as the Lord commanded. Let this one encourage you. Let this one give you more faith. Let this one give you more power so that despite whatever is happening in this world, you may be able to trust in the living God. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. We invite you again next Sabbath as we continue with the same series. May the Lord be with you. Wherever you are, I want to invite you to a prayer, a prayer that is moved by faith. Let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, this world has now come to a point just like in the time of Noah, when he was warned that destruction will come upon the world. But the Bible has reminded that your Holy One has reminded us today that when Noah received this message, he moved by faith, moved with fear, and obeyed what the Lord had commanded, and he enjoyed the promises of your salvation. Your sons and daughters out there are crying day and night because we don't know what is happening to this world. Lord, let the fear that is the fear of you be able to motivate us so that we may look at your word and see what you have instructed us to do. Lord, at this particular point, anybody who does not have hope out there, Lord, I pray like Noah, you can be able to give them hope even when they are shut in. Lord, I wanted to pray even those who are floating in the midst of problems just like Noah's ark was floating in the midst of the front, Lord, you can give them hope in the name of Jesus Christ. Even those who have been affected by the coronavirus, Lord, we pray that you can heal them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for listening to us. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you very much. May the Lord embrace you. Meet you next Sabbath.